Welcome to another edition of What Barry's Talking About from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. On this week's program, a lot of organizations looking to help those less fortunate this year. Food drives, toy drives, special events. But what about those who fall through the cracks? A Barry businesswoman has been there and is helping to fill the gap. The Barry Public Library has a local authors event this weekend. Maybe the break you need from your holiday rushing around. The Daily Cash Lottery is back thanks to local Rotary Clubs. We'll tell you how it works, how to get one, and how it helps. After a week off, we get back on track with Colts Talk and Empower Simcoe, always ready to lend a helping hand, could use a helping hand itself. We get the conversation started after this. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. Many organizations this time of year are collecting food, toys, cash, gift cards, and more to help the less fortunate get through the holiday period. Many of those families are registered with social agencies, but there are some who slip through the cracks who aren't on a list anywhere. Amanda Patrick of Barry remembers being in one of those cracks as a child and now, as a successful entrepreneur, wants to make sure forgotten children and families have something to smile about at Christmas. She outlines her effort for Barry 360. MJ. It's the gift of family, correct? Correct. Yeah, it's our first year, and it really happened so organically. Um, I was raised by a single mother with four kids, and my dad actually left when I was two months old. So we spent the first year of my life in a woman's shelter, and following that, things were extremely tight, and it, you know we had no money really to go around. And um, Christmas was the hardest time for us kids. And my mother had a lot of mental health issues and never proactively reached out for help. So most of the time you can hide it. Christmas is the hardest time because you go back to school and you see all your friends and peers with all their new clothes and their toys and they're all talking about Christmas. And over time it really eroded my self-esteem. And you kind of realize, you know, you're not the same as everyone else. So when I um, became an entrepreneur and started my company, I'm eight years in now, I'm in a different situation than I was as a kid. I worked really hard to get here. And I got invited to do a podcast for Athletic Culture in October. And I was chatting with one of the trainers the week before, and he started telling me about some of his childhood stuff. And it really inspired me, you know, maybe now it's the time to open up a little bit publicly about some things that I've been through. So that's what I chose to do. So I did the podcast in October, opened up about some of the things I just told you. And also, you know, when I was 13, three beautiful little children, seven, four, and three, were playing hide-and-go-seek in my house. They, you know, excitedly found a wooden clothing trunk and climbed inside, like we all did when we were kids, this game of hide-and-seek. Unfortunately, they didn't realize that you know, a clock was ticking, and under eight minutes, they all ran out of oxygen, and they suffocated and died in the trunk. It really just got me thinking about wanting to do something to give back and in honor of those three kids, and that's how this campaign was born. So the objective of the campaign is to reach a certain subset of kids that otherwise are not connected to any charitable organization because their parents are either unwilling, unable, or incapable of proactively doing so. Whether they have mental health issues like my mom, whether they struggle with addiction, there's these kids that are sort of forgotten, and those are the pockets of kids that we're reaching right now. So we're doing it through a nomination process, a lot through social media. We have some community partners that have our information as well. And when I tell you some of these nominations that are coming through are just absolutely heartbreaking. We have stories of human trafficking, uh, women that have gotten out of that, uh, women through the women's shelter that uh, literally left in the middle of the night with nothing, even left their pets behind. Um, I was just speaking with a woman this morning that lost her husband suddenly in May to cardiac arrest, and her her and her six-year-old are basically left on their own. So the stories are really heartbreaking, and what I've been able to do is connect with local businesses and kind-hearted individuals that have donated uh, or pledged money towards the families, and I've been matching them with families. So this little campaign that started about four weeks ago, um, we've gotten about, I think we're sitting at about $50,000 in pledges towards the families that I've matched. Um, and we're, my goal was 10 families. I had no idea what we were going to do. And we're going to surpass 100 children now that we are successfully matching. 
And the key point here is we're not just gifting gifts or, you know, or food or whatnot. We've created an entire experience for these kids so that they really feel special and really feel like everyone else. So they get presents to the Christmas tree, the elf on the shelf, the dinner. We ask the parents all sorts of questions and hand the wish list over to the sponsor. And the, the stories of what they're doing so far are absolutely amazing. And the sponsors are, are going all out. And is it up to is it up to the sponsor to decide what what they want to do for the family? When a family gets nominated, I I call each of them personally myself to hear their story, and then I send them a link to fill in a wish list. And on the wish list, we ask them what their family uh, likes to do together, what the kids' hobbies are, what are some wants and needs of the kids, and we get as much detail as we can. And then I'm also actually going back with the families when sponsors have questions, just to just to really give them a full picture so they can go all out for them and custom- customize it. And if somebody wants to nominate a family, how do they do that? Uh, do they get in contact with you? So there's a campaign website on hardwoodyourhome.com, and there's a uh, form that they can fill in, and they can be completely anonymous if they'd like, and families can self-nominate themselves as well. When this happened, when you were 13, 14 years old, and that, that was sort of like a catalyst for you, right, to... to climb yourself out of the uh, situation that you were in? Very much so, because up until that point, life had already been pretty tough. My mom was not around a whole lot, and we were left on our own a lot. Um, And when that happened, she completely abandoned my sister and I in the house where that happened. And eventually the heat and the hydro got cut off. Um, So I was going to high school while also living in this house with no parents. And when the heat and the hydro went off, we were heading into the winter time, and you know, we literally would sleep in our winter clothes, and we would steal food from the corner store just to be able to eat. Um, we would actually steal those Mr. Noodle packets, and we would shake that, you know, that powder yeah. that comes with those packets. We'd shake it in, and we'd eat that raw, and I basically ate that for nine months. Um, and there was a night when I was laying in bed, and I'm watching my breath, you know, coming in and out, and I just, for me... I was contemplating suicide and how I, I just didn't, I felt so unloved at the time. And I had just had this voice come over me and it just said, no, no, you're going to get out of this. And a realization that I was the only one that was going to do that for myself. So I woke up the next day and I got some pen or a pen and some pieces of paper and I hand wrote 20 resumes and I went went out on foot and I handed them out and Eventually, someone hired me, and I basically just started to tell myself, just work harder than anybody else and start using these jobs as a stepping stone to get out of this, and that's what I've done. So I really know what it's like to struggle, and I know what it's like to persevere and come out of it, and, you know, I guess that's what people resonated with in my story, and it really inspired me to want to do this now and help kids in my similar situation because all it takes is one person to show you that you're special. When is the cutoff for people to um, to submit um, a family a, a, I will a nomination? Help families right up until the week before Christmas. Okay, so nominations can be going in all the the whole entire month. The whole entire month, and secondly to that, we're still looking for people to sponsor families. We have still families that we're looking to help. So if anyone out in the community would like to get involved, they can certainly uh, reach out. There's a form on the website as well, and they can fill in if they'd like to sponsor. What is involved if if you sponsor? Some people have never done it before. They're not sure if it's just a financial contribution or, or, or what exactly is involved for a sponsor. Yeah, great question. So sponsors can get involved in two ways. They can either donate just a financial contribution. Uh, We're anticipating about $250 per child plus $500 for family needs. So it would be $1,000 for a family with two children. Um, And then we will do the shopping on their behalf. Or most sponsors are getting very much involved. They um, tell me they want to sponsor. I give them the wish list and they go out and do all of the shopping and then they get to meet the family upon drop off. The very important thing here is that the family's identities are kept anonymous until that point in time, just to protect their integrity. For more information on Amanda's Endeavor, go to hardwoodyourhome.com or call 705-795-1239. Calendar shopping for next year? Of course you are. But here's one that could give you something back. Richard Fenton joins us from the Rotary Club of Barry Huronia. Richard the 33rd Rotary Daily Cash Lottery and Community Calendar is on sale now. Tell us about it. It really is a perfect holiday gift or a special Christmas gift for that hard-to-buy person. 
in your life. Um, and the Rotary Club of Barry Heronia is uh, proud to partner with other Rotary Clubs uh, and organizations to sell the uh, 2024 Daily Cash Lottery tickets. Of course, all proceeds go to local organizations, uh, community projects and charities. And the lottery ticket comes with a beautiful community calendar, as you just mentioned. So it's easy to keep track of all the daily draws. And, uh, of course, uh, each, each day we have a, a winning ticket that's drawn. Uh, prizes, uh, prizes range from $25 all the way up to $1,000. And of course, next year, uh, if you buy uh, buy a, buy a ticket, uh, there's a bonus draw with being a leap year, so 366 draws next year. And um, I guess the best news is, is that the calendars are still just twenty dollars, and so with over twenty five thousand dollars in cash prizes to be won, um, it's really a, a great opportunity not only to uh, feel good about supporting the community, but uh, hey, get a chance to uh, to benefit uh, personally. Um, all winners uh, remain in the pool, so there's opportunities for multiple wins, and uh, checks are mailed automatically to the winners. So if, you, uh, if you're not following that closely, you don't need to worry. Just uh, keep checking your mail, and hopefully you'll find a well, winning check someday. Wouldn't that be a nice surprise? Absolutely. Find a Rotarian near you. Uh, as I said, we're proud to partner with Rotary Clubs in Alliston, uh, Barry Kempenfeld here in Barry, Innisville, Aurelia, and Perry Sound. And the Rotary Club of Barry, and uh, and if and if you don't know a Rotarian, just uh, just go on the website huroniarotary dot org. That's huroniarotary, all one word, dot o r g, and uh, details are there. Um, we do have some local uh, um, uh, uh, local stores where you can also pick up a calendar. So Active Green and Ross and Ann Street, um, Allendale Veterinary Clinic, Ann Street Optometry. Barry Welding, uh, Barriston Law, uh, Samson Salon and Spa, of course, the RVH Foundation Office, Proax Technologies, and Barry Skin Sational. So lots of ways to, um, to pick up a calendar or, or three, and uh, great stocking stuffers, as I said. And uh, we, we hope that uh, you'll think about uh, supporting you know, local charities and, as I said, a uh, fun way to do it. I, I like the sound of that, uh, a calendar or three. If you know any Rotarians, we're not shy about trying to uh, sell a <laughs> ticket or two, or in this case, a, a, a lottery ticket. So uh, please think of that. Uh, you know, in times like this, we're really trying to help those that are uh, in need in our community, and it's a fun way to do it. Let's talk about some of those uh, charities and community projects. I know you can't list them all because there are so many, but can you give us an idea of some of them? Yeah, um, as I said, you know, we're, we're helping in terms of the, uh, the local charities, uh, we're helping, uh, even through the, through our Rotary partners, uh, Rotary Allison Foundation, Canadian, Canadian Diabetes, uh, Royal Victoria Regional Health Center, um, in, in Innisville, it's the Rotary Troy Scott Community Assistance Fund, uh, in Aurelia, that would be the Aurelia Aqua uh, Theater Project. Uh, in Perry Sound, uh, we're helping Hospice uh, West Perry Sound, and uh, our Rotor- Rotaract Club of Barry Partners are also helping the Women and Children Shelter. So just uh, a few of the many, and of course the local organizations, like I said, some of those clubs, um, they're also raising much-needed funds, and it's a great way to do it. And while you're helping everybody else out, as you mentioned, uh, a daily cash prize, so 366 opportunities to, to get some of your money back. That's right, and, and as I said, if you win once, uh, you, you might ha- you might actually have a chance to win again because your name remains in the draw and uh, checks are mailed automatically. So You mentioned uh, the Rotary website. I, I'm seeing here there's also a cashcalendar.info uh, website as well. Yeah, we're just trying to keep it simple. So if you do go to the shironiarotary.org, uh, that uh, gives you the details, but uh, you know, a couple, a couple of ways to, to find us um, online. All right, and is there a cutoff for sales? Yeah, so we're, we'll be cutting uh, the sales off just before Christmas, uh, around December 22nd. So uh, we're really encouraging people to uh, uh, buy early, buy often, and, uh, and be ready for Christmas. That main website again, if you want to pick up a calendar or three, huroniarotary.org. 
City sidewalks, busy sidewalks this time of year. Maybe you're looking for a break, a pause, something away from the rush. The Barry Public Library is hosting a local author book market this Saturday. Chantelle Boileau is program and outreach librarian. She's with our Ian McLennan. We are excited to feature local authors and give the public an opportunity to discover potential new reads for themselves, but also as potential gifts to people in their lives. We have 40 authors, including editors Barry. So it's an opportunity for local authors to come and meet peers and get some advice from other local authors, but then also from editors Barry. uh, So there's some networking going on too then? There is. And how did did the authors, uh, how were they allowed to participate? Was there some sort of competition or did they apply or how did that happen? Yeah, so authors apply and then we uh, accept uh, up to as much room as we have. So we've actually expanded. I think we have about 15 more authors, almost 20 more than we had the previous year. So last year was our first year for the event. And is there any particular, you know, genre book or it's or it's whatever the author presents? It's whatever the author presents. We have a mix of youth, uh, uh, kids and adult titles. So that could be fiction, nonfiction. We even have a coloring book author. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So go about what, so how did that come about? That one is really interesting. The author had reached out to see about working with the library and he has an AI coloring book. So all of the art in it, he has used artificial intelligence to create the coloring book. Okay. So now um, if uh, I go to the downtown library branch or the the other two that exist here in the city, um, is there any um, area of the library that's specifically geared to local authors or are they in the mix with everybody else? They are in the mix with everyone else, which gives everyone the opportunity to discover them while they're browsing at the library. We do have a local author sticker on our local author books, and at both locations right now, of course, we have displays for our local authors at the moment in uh, anticipation of this Saturday. And they're coming from all over, mostly Barry, Aurelia, Simcoe County? or Exactly. Do we have a, a big supply of local authors, if that's the right word, but um, more than we might think? Yes, we do. Uh, and I mean, I didn't even mention it, but we also have playwrights too. So so yeah. there's somebody even out there that may be interested in buying a book, but also maybe asking, hey, you know what? I've always wanted to try my hand at this. How did you get started? That It's, it's a real open form? It is. And so what questions might they ask? Or what have you heard in the previous event that you held? Just uh, even what formats. So sometimes they might be interested in asking someone who's a virtual author and publishing more virtually as opposed to in a print format. So you might reach out to an author at the event and find out how they've been doing that and how they work with uh, publishers, sometimes online versus, or if they're self-publishing, how do they go about that? Uh, They can even ask the library how to get their book into the library. So all of the authors at the event, if they have a print book or sometimes an e-book, we'll have those in uh, both uh, formats at the library. So a lot of these authors that you see, even if you can't afford their books right now, you're able to still read their materials at the library. Okay. So whether it's writing or maybe even illustration too, right? Mm-hmm. For children's books or whatever. Most certainly, yes. Yeah, that's kind of neat. And um, if people wish to find out more information about the event, they can go to the uh, Barry Public Library website? Yes. Just from our website, you're going to go to programs and events and you're, you'll find our local author showcase. Uh, and there's a link to the local author book market there. But if you go to our events page as well, our events calendar under the programs and events, you'll find just on the Saturday, if you click on the link, that's where we have all the details about all the authors. If you click on the author's names, it'll bring you to their website if they have one. And it gives you a few of their books that a sampling of their books that are current that they have out at the moment. So you can get a sense of what potentially to anticipate and which authors you might want to go visit. Again, the local authors event is this Saturday at the Painswick branch. Go to barrylibrary.ca for a list of authors taking part and the full schedule. What Barry's Talking About is a weekly podcast featuring the best Barry and Simcoe County have to offer and more. You can get caught up and make it easy to keep up in the future by subscribing to What Barry's Talking About through any podcast distributor. 
Still to come on what Barry's talking about, families have reached out to Empower Simcoe for help for years. Now Empower Simcoe is reaching out to the community for help. We find out why. Been a couple of weeks since we checked in on the Barry Colts. We'll do that and get an update on the Rock 95 Cool FM Christmas Toy Drive. Now this. Our community rocks. It's a well-known fact blood transfusion saves lives. It's also a well-known fact that the world relies on voluntary unpaid donations to fill the need for blood. The need for blood never ends. Canadian Blood Services in Barrie is calling on you to help save a life. Please consider donating today. Appointments are mandatory and must be booked in advance. Book today at blood.ca through the Give Blood app or by calling one 888 donate Our community rocks on Barrie's Rock Station. Rock 95. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry360. I'm Dan Blakely. Empower Simcoe feeling the pinch like everyone else. Increased costs to provide its many services, not being matched by increasing funding from the province. So it has launched a Five to Survive campaign, reaching out to the community for help. Executive Director Dr. Claudine Cousins outlines the details for RMJ. You guys are needing stabilization in your funding for for Empower Simcoe. You know, times are tough for everybody and uh, you guys are no different. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's not often that we've, we've done this. Actually, it's the first time I've done this in my six years here at Empower Simcoe as CEO. But it is um, the, the community that we, we are looking to help us raise the awareness of what's going on. You know, we are funded by the, the ministry, we're fully funded by the ministry to provide the services that we do. And while the province has over the, the many years provided us with um, funding, what has not happened is the maintenance of that funding. We have continued to provide services for uh, uh, many people within the community and the ministry over the last 30 years have not continued to provide us with, first of all, we do not get cost of living for the funding that we get. So for the the funding over the last 30 years have continued to erode, but the needs of the people we support has continued to increase. So that is a a fundamental um, disconnect in terms of how we support people. So, you know, the delivery of the services has increased by over 16% over the last 30 years but the funding has decreased. So we're looking to the public to help raise that awareness of um, the need for support for the people that we, we provide services on behalf of. In a perfect world, how much would you like to see Empower Simcoe get? So we're looking for an immediate 5% boost to the agency's core funding. And, you know, that would not make things perfect, um, MJ, it really wouldn't, but it really would provide us with a, uh, some stabilization. What really would provide um, a, a sense of equalization, and I would say equity, is cost of living. What we see around us are other organizations or sectors, education, health care, long-term care, they get cost of living. So every year they get an increase or as cost of living goes up, they get funding that increases the cost of living. We do not get that. So, you know, not only does our cost to our salaries and wages go up, everything else goes up. The cost of running the, the business itself, you know, the transportation to take people we support to the doctor, to to things in the community, to heat their homes to, you know, pay for all the things that you and I pay for for our, our homes. They're all going up. Food goes up. All the things that are going up, we have to find funding to pay for that. But the ministry does not fund us for the, the change in cost. We've seen the, the cost of um, the fuel have gone up astronomically at one point. We had to find money for that. That means we have to cut services. We have to cut our our staff ratios, the service level. We have to cut for that. So what we're asking for is to be treated equitably, the same way you treat education, the same way you treat long-term care, the same way you treat health care. That's what we're really asking for. The 5% would actually provide us with some a little bit of money to 
get us to a place where we can pay for um, more staff in, pay for some of those increased costs, but on the go forward, we would like cost of living. You guys do so much when it comes to like community housing and things like that. And an everyday person, how do you guys help? We help everyone. Everyone, doesn't matter if you have a disability or not. We support individuals from birth to the end of life to live a meaningful life. That means whether you need some, something with regards to employment, if you need something with regards to housing, if you need something with regards to going into the community to learn how to take a bus, if you need something with regards to learning to prepare to do a resume and go out and show your best self, learning how to connect with employers. If you are looking at, you know, your loved ones who you're not sure if they have a disability, we work with you and RVH, some of our partners, to identify whether there is a disability at play. We have family homes who support individuals with a disability to support those individuals in their homes. We have so many different programs and services within our community. We help to teach life skills to individuals who need that extra help. We support individuals to live independently in the community by supporting them to take their medication, helping them with their mental health, connecting them with the community, whether it's through other partners in the community. We work with the shelter community. We do so many things. We are a community agency who believes in providing that connection with community so that we are no wrong door. If there is something that you need and we don't provide it, we will work with you to find that right door. How can uh, the community help you to to get this boost that you're asking? We want communities to, um, through their social media, to um, use our hashtag that we have right now as, um, as they're helping us to promote to what we're trying to do, and through their social media, use the hashtag 5 to survive and push that out through their social media, hashtag 5 to survive and share that, talk to their, you know, their networks, push that out, talk to their MPPs. We've been out talking to our MPPs as well to let them know this is something that they should be concerned with. We're talking about their families, their loved ones their friends, their community, and they need to elevate this to the minister, to the premier, to let them know that this is not right, that our community is facing this, and these are individuals who deserve to live a good and meaningful life. So we want them to raise their voice and advocate on behalf of Empower Simcoe and the people within our community. And for more information, they can go to empowersimcoe.ca. The information is there, but the hashtag is Five to survive. The Barry Colts looking for a couple of wins this week to get back to 500. They're sitting fourth in their division. Barry 360's Will Conkin gets back to his regular chat with Colts broadcaster and writer Gene Pereira. Let's chat about uh, goalie Sam Hillbrandt uh, getting the invite to the U.S. World Junior Camp. Um, been playing uh, well for the Colts, and it seems like he's been catching the eye of the national team coaches there. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's great news, obviously, a great reward for the young Florida native who uh, you know has really kind of uh, came into this year with uh, just three games under his belt, and you know he started 15 of the 24 games, so he's kind of carried the load in the net uh, for Barrett. He's played you know pretty well. I mean, take away a couple of six goal games that weren't really uh, you know his problem, and uh, you know he's he's played pretty well. His numbers are pretty impressive, and they're right up there among the top teams in the league. But you know a big chance talking to Sam. You know he said his first call to his parents and. You know, he's kind of kidding there about, you know, and he's saying that they're going to have to um, make their uh, vacation time. This is Christmas going to be spent in Sweden this year. So that's pretty exciting for the young goaltender. Uh, he was named the preliminary roster, but uh, only three goalies were named to that roster. And then again, each team carries three goalies at World Junior. So they'll be a part of that U.S. team and, uh, you know, a great experience for the young netminder. When you were chatting with him, sounds like he really wants to prove something. It seems like he wants to. He has, he has a fire in his belly. Yeah, he's going in as you know. The, I think with the expectations, is, you know, a lot of talk. We have two NHL prospects who are ahead of him in the in, in the kind of the goaltending uh, ladder there, and uh, the expectation is that he's going to be the third goalie. But in talking to Sam, you know, he said, "Look, I'm going in there, and 
I'm going to try to earn the number one spot, and he's determined to do that. And you know, it's probably a good uh, uh, a good example of why he was invited to the camp. That fiery determination, and you know, again, you see he's been a bit of a surprise in Barry, and then uh, you know he was invited to a, uh, an earlier camp with the U.S. team, and uh, you know he's really earned this opportunity. Jumping back to the Colts' uh, recent schedule, um, they beat the uh, Windsor Spitfires 4-1, then a wild game there, Gene, against the uh, Wolves that saw the Colts lose in the end, unfortunately, 6-9, and then they wrapped up the weekend with a 4-1 loss to the Sioux Greyhounds. Um, Gene, the, the power play is, is, has been really an issue for the club. Yeah, really, you know, specialty teams, uh, you know, have been just a huge problem for burying the power play. Uh, of late, which had kind of improved and mid, mid, uh, moved to mid-pack, and they're kind of sinking again back down to 16th, 17th. And, and, but the big issue has been shorthanded goals. And uh, on uh, Friday in that wild Sudbury game, five shorthanded goals combined between the two teams. The Barry got three themselves, but they gave up two shorthanded goals. And, and then again on Saturday night against a really good Sioux team, uh, you know, they gave up an, another shorthanded goal. And right now, Barry, uh, they've given up the most shorthanded goals in the OHL. And, you know, uh, Marty uh, Williamson, you know, certainly uh, pointed this out, that they're going to have to correct this. But, uh, you know, in all fairness, you know, they're a young club, and they really miss Jacob Frosk and Bo Aiki on that power play, two kind of veterans. A ton, a ton of experience back there. Aiki's the quarterback. Frost got a big factor on power plays, with, or on faceoffs. That helps him get possession on power plays of the puck. So, I mean, obviously missing two key guys there, but they're going to have to find a way because uh, Aiki's out for the rest of the year and, uh, you know, Frost is still a ways away. Do you see a solution with the roster without those two? Like, can you actually see, like, a going forward point? Well, I, I, you know, I, I think the key thing is for them is just to, uh, you know, why you lose capable veterans like that, that means opportunity for some of these young guys. You know, Jack Browie, steps into a bigger role, Evan Passmore, uh, you know, so some of these young guys get more minutes, more responsibility in key situations, and that's the only way they're going to learn is to be put in that. They're going to make mistakes. It's not from a lack of effort. Marty Williamson was telling me it's just they're going to, they're young, young players that are going to have to learn. And then, you know, up front, again, I mean, for, you know, uh, the Newtons, Nolan Newton, Gene Newton, that means more ice time, I, again, for them. So, I think that's their way forward. It's a young club. I think, you know, uh, there's no doubt that they, they, they're in a, a battle to make the playoffs. They want to make the playoffs, but uh, they certainly uh, have an eye to the future here. Coming up for the Colts, uh, they have the Spitfires again on Thursday, then uh, back home hosting the Steelheads. Um, they've held their own against Mississauga with a couple wins already. It, it, it seems, Gene, it seems like they uh, at least have one guaranteed win with them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's, I don't know about guaranteed. I mean, this is a heck of a team. But, you know, they, they've got they got two wins against a very good Mississauga team. And they're in Mississauga, so they get a chance to play them at home here. And, you know, look, I mean, these young guys, they get up. They know Mississauga is a good team. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they've played well. Hillbrand has played well in, in the wins over Mississauga. And, uh, you know, that's been key and an opportunity here. And, as well, it's not a three and three, so they will have a, a, a day to kind of rest uh, after the first couple of games in the week. But uh, certainly with uh, that Saturday game against Mississauga, another good test for this young hockey club. Well, that's all for now. Thanks again very much for chatting, Gene. Thanks, Will. One of Santa's busiest elves this year is Brenda Devine. In addition to her afternoon traffic reports on Rock 95 and Cool FM, she's the head elf at the station's annual toy drive to ensure every kid from toddler to teen has a Merry Christmas. She walked down the hall for a chat with Ian McLennan. So um, how is the toy drive uh, going so far this year? You know, and especially when people's budgets are tight, too. Well, you know what? It's been a little bit slow with the uh, with the donations coming in, but we've been able to fill in orders so far for wish lists for, for children. What's really tough is when I start to get to kids about seven and eight years old, the older the kids get, the tougher it is to fill the wish list for these kids because people donate a lot for little kids up to like, you know, five and six. But then as they get older, we give to kids up to the age of 16. So it gets a little tougher as you get to be 12 and 13 and 14 for us to fill the wish list. So, you know, some toy, like gift cards are always great. And, you know, I mean, if you've got any kids that age yourself, you'll know what, you know what they want. I don't have any kids that age, so I'm not really sure what they're into these days, but uh, anything would help for sure. 
And tell us about the setup, um, where people can make donations and, you know, the coordination that's involved to get this thing together. Well, what's really cool is this year we've got a QR code. Everybody goes to the beer store and the beer stores have coin boxes set up. And on the coin box, there's a QR code. So no problem. Just flash your camera in front of the QR code. And any donation, $5 will add up. If everybody did that, we'd be great. It would be great. Now, what's the timeline in terms of, uh, you know, or is there a cutoff point for December donations? December the 18th is okay. the, the cutoff time. And, um, of course, we've got the Stuff a Cruiser coming up this Saturday. So we're going to be at both Canadian Tires here in Barrie, the north end and the south end, from 9 until 1. We've got a big uh, cruiser that the police are going to come. And we're going to stuff those cruisers. And hopefully you can come and help us and stuff the cruiser for the toy drive. That would be awesome. Now, you and all your elves have a lot of organizing to do, too. Maybe give us behind the scenes how, how this all comes together at the end of the day. Well, what we do is we just uh, we, we separate all the toys by, you know, by ages. And um, we just make sure that we have enough toys. We give, uh, you know, make sure every kid's got a toy, a good toy, an educational toy, maybe a puzzle or a craft or something like that. And we give them all a stocking stuffer as well. And you, and you mentioned too earlier, it's it's not all uh, you know little video games, but there's uh, um, there's the you mentioned Play Doh and building blocks, so it's 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 not all video stuff, right? Or no, it's not all video stuff. It's it's not all tech stuff. I mean, definitely um, there are kids, of course, especially older kids that are into that stuff. But anything you can donate is great. If you need more information on the toy drive, go to rock95.com or 1075coolfm.com and look for the toy drive button. And that's our program for this week. Thanks to Ian, MJ, and Will for their input, to Matt Ladder for his technical touch, and to you for listening. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to What Barry's Talking About, rate it, review it. You can also keep up with What Barry's Talking About on X at Barry360, on our website, barry360.com. Some of you can still see us on Facebook. And there's our daily Kickstart podcast available from any streaming service and on our website. I'm Dan Blakely. Hope you'll join us again next week.